What's going on, people? Welcome back to Black Print Media, your home for news in the margins. One way that the public can hold democracy to account is through protesting. Whether peaceful or violent, protesting can have a significant impact on both domestic and international policy and how we function generally in society. In the UK, people have taken to the streets over all kinds of issues from women's rights to the Iraq war. However, with the introduction of the Police, Crime, Sentencing and Courts Bill, many fear that their right to protest will be watered down. So, what is the Police, Crime, Sentencing and Courts Bill? How has the public responded and what, if anything, should we do about it? Before we continue, if you like this video or learn something new, remember to leave a like to let us know. We're closing in on our first 50 subscribers and it will be great if you guys could help us to reach that target. So make sure, if you're new here, click that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to make sure you're the first in line when we post. All of our articles can be found on our Instagram page. And should you want to join the conversation, make sure you follow us on Twitter as well. If listening is more your thing, head over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts or SoundCloud and check out the Black Print Podcast. Remember, no A in the black, no I in the print. Keep it locked. At 176 clauses, 20 schedules and nearly 300 pages, the bill is a mammoth piece of legislation. Its measures introduce harsher penalties for serious crimes, ending a policy of early prison release and modernising existing court processes. Whilst the bill looks to be largely well-intentioned, it's the clauses on protests that have drawn the most criticism. Clauses 54 to 60, as outlined in the bill's explanatory notes, are necessary due to the recent changes in the tactics employed by certain protesters. For example, gluing themselves to buildings or vehicles blocking bridges or otherwise obstructing access to buildings such as the Palace of Westminster and newspaper printing works. The bill will allow the police to put more conditions on static protests, such as imposing a start and finish time, setting noise limits and applying these rules to a demonstration by just one person. Current law states that police must first determine whether a demonstration could cause serious public disorder, property damage or disruption to the life of the community before restrictions can be imposed. The new bill would leave much more to police discretion and enable them to criminalise protests they deem a public nuisance. The cost for not following police directions about a protest is a fine of £2,500 and possibly arrest. Those that defend the bill, including the Metropolitan Police Service, say it is needed to tackle demonstrations in the manner of those seen by Extension Rebellion in 2019, where police resources were severely stretched and limited due to the current drafting of protest rules. Those against the bill, including former Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, believe that people's right to protest should not require police permission. He said, I want a society where it is safe to walk the streets, where you can speak out, you can demonstrate, and you don't have to seek the permission from the police or the Home Secretary to do so. The spotlight has shone brightly on the police's response to public gatherings over the past year, where their tactics in handling Black Lives Matter protests, the counter Protect Our Statues protests, and most recently the Sarah Everard vigil has been called into question. Whether this increased public scrutiny will manifest in votes in Parliament is yet to be seen. Public demonstrations against the bill, labelled Kill the Bill protests, have been seen across the UK, with demonstrations taking place towards the end of March and over the bank holiday weekend. Some demonstrations in Bristol ended up in clashes with the police, resulting in police vehicles set on fire, smashed shop windows and 20 injured officers. So what's next? The bill has passed second reading in the Commons and awaits to be scheduled for committee stage, where experts and interest groups can weigh in. There still remains ample opportunity for the bill to be amended, not least in the House of Lords where they are less bound by party political lines, though there can be no guarantees as we know. As debate has heated up over the past few weeks, some are now revisiting the bill with fresh eyes. The Labour Party, for example, had supposedly previously planned to abstain from voting on the bill, but have since shifted its position to actively vote against it. A similar bill has appeared in Florida, which would mean that more than nine people blocking a road would result in being given a second-degree felony, potentially affecting their voting rights. Whether this is an international trend of clamping down on people's rights to protest, we shall see. 